Hey everyone, Matt here. Uh, welcome back to the channel. I wanted to spend this video discussing three side hustles that I have done and currently am uh, still working with that have brought in over $6,000 in income, uh, extra income for me. And this is 6,000 net. So I've already taken care of all of the, uh, the taxes and fees and everything associated with these. So starting off with side hustle number one, and that is secret shopping. Uh, I actually discovered this uh, side hustle just through YouTube itself. Uh, the, basically the way it works is you are a contractor for uh, different types of different companies and you go out and evaluate whether they might be restaurants, they might be stores or kiosks. And what you'll do is evaluate the service, the food, whatever it is that they're providing. And then when you go home, you'll fill out a survey a questionnaire you might have to upload a receipt if you needed to buy something which they will reimburse you for you might have to upload a picture of a particular service or I might have to upload a picture of the food but once you do they will approve everything and pay you whatever it might be now the company that I work with is called market force I'll put their link down in the description below and the great thing with Market Forest that I've that at least I've noticed is that they will show me a map, a Google map of all the different shops that are available in either my local my neighborhood or where I work. So what I'll do is I'll pick say uh, like a restaurant or something for work, and while I'm at lunch, I will go do that shop, and then I'll come home, fill out the survey. I will upload the receipt and then any pictures if that's needed. And then in about a month later, I'll get a check in the mail. The great thing that I noticed about this is it doesn't bring in a whole lot of cash, but what it does do is it helps free up a little bit of monthly cash flow for meals. So any money that I would have or that I would have had to spend for lunch that day or dinner that day, I get now push off to the next week. And it just kind of also and also means I don't have to make a lunch for that day or something like that. So it does help on time wise. The second side hustle that I currently am working with is my eBay store. This store started uh, around a year ago and I sell a lot of items that I can either find for free or items that I paid very, very small amount for that I then flip on the eBay site. Now, Amazon is another really great resource uh, where you can have an online store and sell items. For me, it just so happens that the items that I sell are more conducive to the eBay platform because the type of buyers that I have, specifically like collector's items and things like that, are more likely gonna find my items on eBay as opposed to Amazon. But they're still both really great platforms. And like I said, this can be started for practically zero dollars and at, for almost zero amount of time. Here's how it works. Go onto Craigslist and look under the for sale sign and under for sale you'll see the free section click on that and you can do the same thing with facebook marketplace as well then look under the items that are currently being listed for free and this is stuff that people might have like an old weight set or they might have some old electronics or old toys or something that they know that they're just trying to basically get rid of open up a new tab on your browser and go to ebay.com and then Take the items that are currently listed on for free on Craigslist and put them into the eBay's search engine and see what is currently showing up. You'll see a list of all the different types of items that are currently on sale for that particular item. Then go over to the left and take a look at the checkbox that says sold items. Check on that. Now what that will do is filter all of the items that are still there, but these are all the items that have sold. And this will, also, this will do a couple things. Number one, it'll show you that there is, number one, a market for this, that particular item. And number two, it'll also give you an idea of the price range on what you can actually get for that. The third thing to take a look at is the dates. Because if you see that 10 to 15 of these things have sold within the last month, you can, say, you can comfortably say, this is an item that there's a market for, it's selling, and it very well could be making money. So reiterating the point that I made uh, before, I was looking under, this is Santa Barbara right up in here, uh, just for the free stuff on Craigslist, and I was kind of scrolling through just to see what is available, and I found these uh, these little quick lock tab thingies. Come on. 
you know, these are the little uh, things that you normally throw away, those plastic, you know, for the freshness on usually bread bags is where you'll see them. And I happen to just look these up. I call them a bread bag tab on eBay. And, you know, here's a bunch of them right here for, eight, you know, 850 Now, these are more like professional versions of this. But there's still, there's random, you know, clippings and, and random versions of this that are just kind of here. And then if you looked towards uh, the bottom here over on sold, you know, obviously these will sell. But then here's this, these kind of things. They're, they're selling for like, you know, maybe one for 15. Another bag of them, plastic bag of them and stuff like that. So there's stuff, heck, here's even more of them down here. So for like eight bucks, and you can pick these up for free. These are totally free. Or you could save them. And there's a lot of stuff that does that. A lot of what you might consider garbage actually will do this. Uh, so for example, if I typed in paper towel uh, roll, empty, that'll work. And there's a bunch of these, see? So you could save these if you wanted to. Right, and the same thing works with toilet paper too. This is all sold, by the way. And look at the, look at these dates. These these just sold. Okay. It is currently October 9th right now, the morning of October 9th. So these just sold. All of these will sell. If you have uh, empty egg cartons, egg cartons sell. If you happen to have these, not that much, but still, it's not bad. Or if you happen to find these, they'll sell. If you have, what was the other one I saw? Oh, empty Tic Tac. Tic Tac containers. Empty Tic Tac containers. So, empty Tic Tac containers. If you want. These are not that, well, I was going to say, they're not that popular, but actually they probably are. All right. Um, again, empty Tic Tac containers are selling. And if we look to see what is currently listed, you have Altoid containers, empty candy containers. This is all garbage that you probably throw out, but you could actually just save it up in a box and people will buy it from you. Okay. A uh, similar scenario with, I was looking under... This is under the, uh, let's see, this is Santa Cruz. And one of the first things that showed up in the, on the free was this. It's free TV right here. Look at this. You could grab this. It says, it says it works. There's no cord. Just heavy. Come pick it up. Grab this and sell it on uh, Facebook Marketplace for like 40 bucks. Done and done. Something else I think I saw down here. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> uh, let's see, what else did I see? Oh, look, you can get free horse manure, you know, in case you run out at the store. Uh, okay, um, I don't know what these are. So I'm kind of discovering this here. I don't see, is there a market for this? These are um, beer bottles. Let's see here. I'm doing this here for the first time. I don't know, is there a market for this? Oh. Uh, actually, let's, let's, re, let's make... Apparently, there's a market for this. These things, too. I'd have to make sure that I, you know, I know what's actually going on here. But again, the... Whoops. But again, these are apparently, they're empty bottles. Free case of 12 bottles. Washers are good. And looks like there's people that are selling these. Uh, how many, of, how have they sold in the past? So, a little bit of a, a delay in the market. But, heck, they're free. And if you can price better than everybody else, so for these, I would probably offer free shipping, free returns, and you might want to price these a little bit better. But there's still, again, th th this is, 
this is something that you can just grab if it's on your way to work or something like that. Something else that I uh, that I found. This is over in um, this is Boise. It looks like yeah, Boise. Where did it go? This is over in Idaho. Oh, here we go. Another TV. Look, free a free small TV. This will sell for thirty or forty bucks on Facebook uh, Marketplace. Or you could even try selling it on Craigslist. You just go grab it. He doesn't have space for it and needs room. Another one that I found was, uh, where is it here? This is in uh, this is in Houston. I mean, there's a broken TV right here. Oh, here it is, a 60-inch HD TV, right here. Now, let's see, the stand. Stand only 200, stand TV, okay. all right. But he said right here that the uh, TV is free right there. So that's important. So free TV, 60 inch HD TV for free. You could definitely sell that on uh, Facebook Marketplace or anywhere. Really. The only thing that's left now is basically to ship them to which there's another solution for that go back up on top of the Craigslist and you're still under the free uh, section, type in uh, shipping supplies or boxes or packing material. And there will usually be a couple of folks that are getting rid of, they could be shipping materials, boxes, like old Amazon boxes. There might be some packaging materials like peanuts and styrofoam. Go ahead and hit them up as well. Those are gonna be your shipping supplies to ship the free items that you just also found on the Craigslist. So here's how you plan your day. You contact the folks that have the free items that you're gonna sell. You contact the folks that have the free shipping supplies and you say, hey, I'm gonna come by at this particular date and pick up your stuff, if that's all right. You go out, pick up your items. Then afterwards, you go stop off for lunch or whatever at a restaurant, do a shop, a secret shop, come home, fill out the survey, upload your receipt, get your free lunch and get paid for it while you were doing that. Take some pictures of the items that you're gonna then list, create your listing. Then once the item sells, you'll have your, your box and everything ready to go and all your shipping supplies, the only thing that's left over is you just have to print the label to which uh, these right here, see these? These are blank labels and you get two of them and these fit perfectly when eBay gets you, when you actually buy the shipping label and you just print out on this and stick it right on the box. These are also free. You just go to ups.com and you have to sign up for an account, but uh, once you do, you can find like shipping supplies and free shipping supplies and just look for the eight and a half by 11, these labels, and they will mail them to you free of charge. The third side hustle that I have made some money in is participating in a crowdsourcing platform. Now, particularly the platform that I'm talking about is uh, called Innocentive.com. Again, I'll put the link down below so you can take a look at that. And what this is, is where people and organizations will put up problems that they might have for their particular organization. So those folks are called seekers. They're, they're seeking solutions. And they'll post these problems out to the world, basically, on the Innocentive platform, where a bunch of everyone else is able to take a look at these and they are known as solvers and they will submit solutions to this. Okay. The great thing about this crowdsourcing platform is that you can submit as many different solutions as you want for any particular problem and you can submit as many solutions to as many different types of problems as you want as well because it's all gonna be anonymously done. There are three levels of challenge that you can participate in. The first one is these are basically called ideation challenges. And these are pretty straightforward. The seeker isn't looking for too much, maybe a page or so of a description of whatever your solution might be. And the price ranges for this uh, usually might be around a couple thousand dollars. And there's not really a whole lot that's required. The time frame is much smaller. But again, it you can pump these out relatively quickly. The second type of challenge is the challenge that I participated in, and that's called a theoretical challenge. This has a little bit more uh, rigor to it. The, you're gonna have to explain your solution with a little bit more 
uh, details as well as possibly offering solutions. For mine, I actually made a prototype so that I could take pictures of it and demonstrate that it actually worked the way that I said it was going to work. Finally, there is what are called RTPs. These are reduction to practices. These are the most rigorous, but at the same time, the most awarding. These can be in the hundreds of thousands, if not higher of an award. And they'll usually be done in phases. Usually the first phase is where you submit your idea of why, how you think your solution would actually work. The second stage is where they're kind of be looking for prototypes and a, and a proof of concept. And then finally, in the third stage is when you actually have to deliver a real working model and demonstrate that your solution will work. It is the longest, it is the most rigorous. However, like I said, it is the most rewarding. And just in case you're wondering about these particular uh, solutions, when you submit your ideas, what's the deal with uh, IP and intellectual property and everything, each solution or each challenge will state what it's really looking for and what the rules are. For mine, all I had to do was give a license, uh, give permission for them to use this my idea as a license, which means that I got to keep the original IP so I could take my idea and I could sell it to some other company if I wanted to. It's just that the seeker for my challenge could use any or all of my idea in any way that they saw fit in perpetuity. Some challenges, and I know a lot of these challenges for the RTP challenges, will require you to sign over your IP. So you will no longer own your idea. It will be their idea. So be aware that if that's something that you want to do. Or if you say, hey, look, I like this idea that I came up with. I might want to pitch it to other companies to see if I can't get some licensing deals and royalties. If that's your idea, that, that's perfectly fine. But don't submit it then to Innocent. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that. And if you have any questions or comments about any of this material, be sure to go ahead and leave it down in the comments below. And if you have any additional side hustles that you currently do, I'd love to hear about them. Anyways, I will talk to you guys later and have a good one.